Review, 2023 Acura Integra recaptures glory of days past. Please support us by pressing the like button and subscribe so that this channel will grow and provide many benefits for you. Thank you. It hasn't been 5 minutes into my drive of the 2023 Acura Integra and I've yet to take a corner at speed, but I already like this car. The way the steering firms up on the freeway, the adaptive damper's ability to smother bumps while contributing to a planted feel, the snick snick motion of a Honda slash Acura manual shifter, it all adds up to a new Integra worthy of the reverence car enthusiasts have for the endearing Integras of the 1990s and early 2000s. My test car is an Integra A-Spec with technology package model. At $36,895, it's the only way to get the manual transmission. It sits atop the lineup, yet it costs $10,000 less than the average transaction price for today's passenger vehicles. Buyers can spend as little as $31,895 and still get a 5-door hatchback with a premium ride, a high degree of refinement, and a 200-horsepower 1.5-liter turbo 4, but the 6-speed manual is far too fun and this model's extra equipment is too generous to justify spending less. Balanced Dynamics The new Integra has nothing to do with the underwhelming ILX it replaces. It rides on a version of Honda's global small car architecture that's modified for the Integra. It's made of 33% aluminum for lighter weight, it uses high-strength steel to reinforce key areas, and Acura further strengthens it with extensive structural adhesive. The Honda Civic C is its closest sibling, as both cars use the same 107.7-inch wheelbase, but the Integra stretches 6.8 inches longer and is 5% stiffer than the Civic hatchback, according to Acura. The Integra uses a McPherson strut suspension up front, sorry, no double wishbones like the good OL days of the 1990s, and a multi-link independent rear suspension. The tech package model employs adaptive dampers, a first for the Integra, and when buyers choose the manual transmission, Acura throws in a limited slip differential. Acura engineers did a great job of tuning every aspect of the suspension. While the adaptive dampers really help already good ride and handling, the tuning of items like the 27mm hollow front stabilizer bar, solid 17.5mm rear stab bar, 18mm on the A-spec, and a large rear compliance bushing, among other elements, create this kind of premium ride quality. Most of my time is spent in the tech package model. Cycling through the drive modes, the ride is soft but controlled and it never firms up too much, even in sport mode, which also improves body control. Through corners, the car leans little, tracks a consistent line, and the A-Spec's limited slip differential helps it put the power to the pavement without spinning the inside wheel. Thrown hard into a corner, the car first responds with slight understeer that can change to oversteer by lifting suddenly off the throttle. Skilled drivers can take advantage of that in an autocross, but stickier tires than the A-Spec's standard all-season 235-40 or 18S, and especially the base model's 225-50 or 17S, could allow more grip in fast corners. The road feel through the small diameter steering wheel and the car's response to steering inputs both contribute greatly to the Integra's charm. One reason is the steering has an ultra-quick 11.52 to 1 ratio, slightly quicker at 11.33 to 1 in the base model, but it doesn't feel that quick or make the car darty on the freeway. It has electric assist and a mechanical variable ratio that dials in quicker responses the more the driver turns the steering wheel. Though sporty, the Integra shouldn't be confused with a performance car. Aside from the lack of performance tires, it also has street brakes, though they're larger than those of the ILX. Up front, it sports vented 12.3-inch discs with two-piston calipers and out back it gets 11.1-inch solid rotors with single-pot calipers. They get the job done during a commute and in limited spurts of canyon driving, but don't count on them to handle consistent heavy braking situations. 21 years, no more horsepower. Acura considers the RSX, which was built from 2002 to 2006, to be a part of Integra history, but not the more state ILX. Lurking under the hood of the RSX was a 2.0-liter inline for that made 160 horsepower in standard trim and 200 horsepower in the Type S model. 
21 years on, the Integra makes 200 HP. At first blush, that's not a lot of growth in two decades. The difference is how that power comes on. The naturally aspirated engine in the 2002 Integra Type S relied on VTC technology that switched to a different cam profile at higher RPM. It had relatively little power down low, and drivers only tapped into the best power if they had a heavy foot. The 2023 Integra gets the car's first turbocharger. It's strapped to a 1.5-liter inline-4 and helps Thanks to conjure 200 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 192 LBFT of torque from 1,800 to, to 5,000 like RPM, this. while the 2002 engine's max HP arrived all the way up at 7,400 RPM and its torque didn't max out until 6,000 revs. While the RSX's VTC system switched